Dr. Wan Faiziah Wan Abdul Rahman from Pathology Department University Science Malaysia. Okay, my lecture today regarding pituitary pathology. Okay, uh, pituitary pathology uh, at the first lecture and then follow uh, by second lecture adrenal pathology. For pituitary pathology, I think you can enjoy first. But because I think for adrenal is quite uh, difficult and complex uh, than pituitary pathology. But I hope everyone that go through the note given, although I, I did I give it but uh, via WhatsApp, not uh, in e-learning yet because I tak siap um, uh, edit. Uh, and then uh, for those who have read, okay, good. But you need to go through one by one today together because some of the uh, points is not true. I just uh, edited uh, this morning, all right? You know that um, medical medicine is always like that. Even for the Robin, previously it is sixth edition during my time and sixth or fifth edition, but now it's 10 edition, you know, and every edition, they did uh, changes, uh, changes in few things, uh, in, uh, including in the word, uh, uh, in the term use, all right? So that that's why I need to edit every year the slide, okay? Okay, at the end of this lecture, uh, all of you should be should be able at least uh, first to understand the causes and clinical manifestation of pituitary disease and to describe the morphology, the gross and microscopic features of the pituitary adenoma and to differentiate the types of pituitary adenoma and their clinical consequences. All right, just simple. Um, pituitary is a very special organ, endocrine organ. It is very small, just a being a size. It a small being shaped organ that located within the uh, cella turcica. Uh, cella turcica is a depression or saddle like shape of the sphenoid bone. This is a sphenoid bone, and this uh, area we call it cella turcica, and it has a close proximity to the optic chiasm. This is optic chiasm, right? And just beneath the hypothalamus, this is hypothalamus, and it has a pituitary stalk or infundibulum here, and then connect, it's connected with the hypothalamus via the infundibulum or pituitary stalk. And it has two of a uh, uh, component. We call it first is anterior pituitary, and the and and we have a posterior pituitary. Only that one is uh, important. All right. Um, Anterior pituitary also being called as adenohypophysis. For posterior pituitary, we call it neurohypophysis. All right. Okay. And these are the cell types and the pituitary hormones. Okay. Um, pituitary, uh, the main function is to produce the uh, certain hormones, some hormones. Most of the hormones are being produced by the anterior pituitary. These hormones are uh, being produced by specific cells that present in the pituitary. For example, uh, we call it somatotroph cells. This is cells, somatotroph is cells that produce the growth hormone or GH hormone. And we have the mammosomatotroph cells that produce growth hormone and prolactin. This is a new novel findings. Um, they found that there is a specific cells that produce both hormones. In previous um, uh, Robin, in previous uh, edition of Robins, there is not mention about the memo, memo somatotroph hormones uh, cells. All right. This is I added uh, recently. Okay. And then the lactotroph cells that produce the prolactin hormones. We have corticotroph cells that produce ACTH, adenocorticotrophic hormones. We have uh, tyrotroph that produce the thyroid stimulating hormone. Gonadotroph produce the FSH and luteinized hormone, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Okay. And then we have a one part of area which is include under anterior pituitary. We call it pass intermedia and they, 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 there is a cell we call it pass intermedia cells that producing melanocyte stimulating hormone mh 
fish, all right? And then this hormone all produced by the cells that located with the anterior pituitary, okay? But um, for posterior pituitary, also producing hormone, which is oxytocin and vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, ADH. But this hormone being produced uh, by the hypothalamus above, but then secreted. Huh? The, because it has a direct connection from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary. So the hypothalamus produced this hormone and then but this hormone secreted by the posterior pituitary. All right. You know that in posterior pituitary, it only the co composed of the modified glial cells or pituitary and also axonal process or neurons. So we're impossible for them to produce their own hormone. Okay, understand? I hope everyone clear about that. Okay. Now we go to, uh, this is specific for the anterior pituitary hormones and the targeted organs. Okay. Remember that all the hormones that have been produced by the anterior pituitary must act on the certain organ. Okay. Must act on the certain organs. That's why we call it endocrine organs. Endocrine organs. Endocrine organs is the organ that able to, to secrete or to produce certain hormones that able to act on the certain organs. Okay, understand? For example, uh, we have the uh, the anterior pituitary produce the thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay, that act on the thyroid. Okay, from this uh, hormone, the thyroid will be able to secrete the Thyroxine. All right. And then we have the prolactin hormone that being produced by the mammotrophic cells within the anterior pituitary that act on the mammary glands. Okay. And the same thing, TTH that being produced by the anterior pituitary uh, will act on the adrenal gland to produce some certain other hormones from the adrenal glands. All right. Okay. And then, um, uh, we have the growth hormone that been produced uh, by the anterior pituitary that will further act on the adipose tissue and as well as on the muscles. And the FSH and LH hormone produced by anterior pituitary will act on the testes and the ovary. And the same thing, the MSH will act on the cells, the melanocyte cells, to produce melanin pigments. Okay, I hope by now everyone clear at this stage. Very simple, but need a deep understanding. All right. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that what does it mean with the endocrine? Endocrine is a uh, when there's a and uh, we call it endocrine organs when the organ able to release certain hormone, and this hormone will go into the bloodstream and will act on the certain targeted organs, all right? Some of the, some it has a direct effect on the organ and some will cause the uh, effect to the organ to produce another hormone, okay? So this basically, to, 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 to describe to you in detail, and this table is very good because it, it mentioned what type of hormones produced by anterior pituitary and what what the target targeted organ and what they do to the targeted organ. All right. For example, ACTH that have been produced by the anterior pituitary will target on the adrenal cortex to stimulate the production of the corticosteroid hormones. All right. The FSH uh, and LH act on the female ovaries and the testes for the Stimulate the ovulation, the estrogen production, progesterone production, and also stimulate the androgen by the testes. TSH, thyroid gland, stimulate the thyroid hormones. Prolactin, add on the mammary glands for the stimulate the milk production. Okay, growth hormone, almost every cell in the body will act on the almost every cell on the in the body especially on the muscles and the fatty tissue to increase the metabolism in the target cells 
to for the synthesis of the somatomedin in the liver and to stimulate the growth of the epiphyseal plate. All right, the MSH act on the melanocytes to stimulate the synthesis of the melanin pigment. All right. Okay, and for the posterior, uh, for the hormone that been uh, we, uh, produced by posterior pituitary secretes by the posterior pituitary. For example, we have ADH or vasopressin that will further act on the kidney and the smooth muscles to stimulate the reabsorption of the water. Remember that ADH the function is to maintain the body water. All right, to maintain the water in the body. All right. And then for the oxytocin, oxytocin add on the uh, uterus and mammary gland to stimulate the uh, muscle, smooth muscle contraction uh, for the uterine contraction and also to stimulate the milk ejection for the, from the mammary uh, glands. Okay. So this is example of the um, uh, pituitary uh, glands that being removed uh, from the patient. And what we can see here, yeah, the bigger part is the anterior pituitary and the small part is the posterior pituitary. And you can see this is the stalk that connect the pituitary to the hypothalamus. All right. Um, this is the, the microscopic uh, features of the pituitary uh, glands uh, because it has a two component, the anterior and posterior. Okay, for the posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis, um, as the name implied there, neurohypophysis, meaning that it only composed of the neural cells, neural cell and uh, part of uh, macroglial cells like that, just like brain, like something like that, all right? But for the anterior pituitary, what you can see here, it composed of the epithelial cells that arrange like a glandular or nesting pattern, all right? And it has a colorful, it has many colors from pink, blue, and in between. All right, so that's <clears throat> describe how variation, variation, variation of their function in producing various hormones. All right. Okay, and then look at, uh, we take one of the area, uh, this is under higher power of one of the area from the anterior uh, pituitary or adenohypophysis. You can see here, okay, that very beautiful, some in pink, blue, deep blue, and or some in between. The one in pink, the A, we call it acidophilic cells. The deep blue here, we call it basophilic cells. And then in between, we call it chromophobe cells, okay. Acidophilic cells mainly uh, uh, composed of the somatotroph and the uh, uh, lactotroph, which is mainly produce the growth hormone and the prolactin. But for the basophilic cells, mainly secrete the ACTH, DSH, gonadotrophins. And then chromophobe cells also secreting something, but it less uh, secretory activities as compared to acidophilic and the basophilic cells. However, everyone no need to remember all this. Eh? No need to remember oh, whether uh, uh, cell that producing growth hormone is acidophilic cells or basophilic cells. No need. Okay. Uh, just for your information. Uh, okay. And then for neurohypophysis uh, or posterior pituitary, it just really resembles the neural tissue. You can see here, just like a neural tissue, the uh, spindle cell, the fibrous tissue with the glial cells scattered the glial cell glial cells mean the cells within the brain to glial cells glial cell located within the brain and the nerve fibers okay these are neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary okay uh, let's go to the um, uh, clinical manifestation of pituitary disease hmm? it's just simple Clinical manifestation, whether hyperpituitarism, hypopituitarism, or local mass effect. Yeah? Hyperpituitarism meaning that uh, excess secretion of the trophic hormones, uh, and the hormone, the clinical features depends on what type of hormone involved, but mainly growth hormone. Okay, 
But for the hypopituitarism, when there is deficiency of trophic uh, hormone, and also depends on which hormone affected. All right. When we when we we mention about the trophic hormones, trophic hormones. You remember the name of the uh, cell just now, the one who produce um, uh, growth hormone. We call it somatotroph, T R O P H. So we call it. Uh, uh, trophic hormones is actually trophic hormone is hormone that has a growth effect, whether in terms of hyperplasia or hypertrophy on the tissue that it is stimulating. But actually, the trophic hormones mainly mainly refer to the growth hormone. Huh? It um, if you found the word tropic without H, the tropic hormones is different things. Eh? Tropic hormones, meaning that hormone that acts on another endocrine glands that result in producing another hormone. For example, like uh, uh, TSH, huh? tropic hormones, because TSH that been produced by anterior pituitary will act on the thyroid hormone and uh, a thyroid gland, but that thyroid gland will further reduce, produce another hormone, we call it tyrosine. Okay? that tropic but doesn't matter i just want to 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 to, to make it clear okay that there is a difference between trophic and the tropic here okay um for local mass effect um, usually um for uh, for the tumor for the tumor without a uh, manifestation of the pituitary manifestation uh, so a uh, patient not aware about the increasing the size of the tumor until it caused the cellular expansion or bony erosion or disruption of the diaphragm of the cellar okay usually occur for the non-functioning uh, adenoma or tumor uh, because there is no uh, no no production of the uh, no excess of the secretion no excess of the trophy hormones Okay, understand? Okay, so this the clinical manifestation of pituitary disease. There are the causes, eh? the causes of hyperpituitarism, the causes of hypopituitarism, and then the local mass effect. What the causes of the local mass effect? Okay, so the hypopituitarism, the most common, is due to the functional adenoma of. The, of the anterior pituitary functional means that it assess it produce a lot of the hormones okay and then hyperplasia of the anterior pituitary although it's quite rare but it can occur and then carcinoma of the anterior pituitary and also the secretion of the hormones of non pituitary we call it paraneoplastic syndrome eh? new paraneoplastic syndrome means that this is not related with the pituitary, for example, lung cancer that produce the ECTH. All right, all right. And then hypopituitarism. What the causes of the hypopituitarism? Is this anything that able that causes the destruction to the pituitary gland can cause the hypopituitarism? For example, ischemic injury, eh? surgery, radiation inflammatory reaction and also any tumor eh? uh, especially for the non-functional functional pituitary adenoma okay Let, if there is something wrong for example uh, suddenly my voice not uh, uh, appear just um, uh, uh, someone unmute and and tell me and another thing in case you not understand um, certain word before it become uh, uh, but it create a misunderstanding. Better you ask. Uh, just unmute yourself, and uh, you can you can ask. Okay. I like uh, if someone interrupt me and ask because I don't like to talk to myself. I for for two hours today. All right. Okay. For local mass effect. The causes of local mass effect. Okay. What the causes? Um, I mean the local mass effect. What? The consequence after that, eh? okay. Um, usually, um, uh, we 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 know that patient have local mass effect when patient uh, presented with the, for example, bi-temporal hemianopia. 
you know, because there is compression of the decaseting the fibers of the optic chiasm. Eh? This is a very fatognomony or very classical. Now, those who come in with a bitemporal hemianopia, just, but, uh, after this, I will show you what how uh, he, it happened. It of course there is problem with the optic chiasm, optic chiasm. So there is no other tumor actually uh, that really uh, um, uh, look at the uh, close proximity to the, to the optic chiasm, except for the pituitary adenoma. Okay, and then. Um, when patient presented with elevated uh, uh, intracranial pressure, like headache, nausea, vomiting, and then those who ac have it acute hemorrhage into the adenoma, for example, in case of the pituitary apoplexy, acute hemorrhage into the adenoma. So all this can cause a local mass effect. Okay, so uh, let's look at the cartoon or the diagram about the... Uh, now, uh, if in case you you ask me in the chat, I think I cannot uh, chat the chatting a uh, chat box because very difficult. I don't know. I'm not the skill very good in uh, in IT. I'm I'm afraid when I I uh, I chat the chat box, everything will lost. Okay, so just unmute yourself and uh, uh, interrupt me and ask. Okay, all right. Um. Look at the hyperpituitarism here. It's very simple, especially when you, when you have patient standing in front of you, you know that patient this patient have hyperpituitarism based on these features, huh? uh, based on your observation on the thickening of skull protruding, the supraorbital ridge, the coarsening of the facial features, the prognathism, you punya dagu and then, uh, and then broadening of hands like this, okay, thicken the heel pads, enlarge the uh, skeletal muscles, muscles, and then the organ will cause the cardiomyopathy, the goiter, and patients have a blurring of vision, blindness, and then it's contrary to the hypopituitarism when patients have hypopituitarism, yeah, actually easy to diagnose and treat. Uh, because it, it, it's uh, not that difficult from your examination, you can detect, okay? Patients usually have a personality changes, weight loss, weakness, eh, loss of libido, muscle and soft tissue wasting, and all this can cause a sudden death, okay? So the causes, you might think of the weather, adenoma, there's infarction of the, uh, the area, the empty cell syndrome, there's almost no pituitary. It's like the patient have no hormones and no pituitary gland, okay? Because of the destruction of the pituitary gland that cause all this, right? Um, I think I'm better off my WhatsApp. Okay, all right. Um, okay. The local mass effect, the most common local mass effect is the bitemporal hemianopia. You know why? Because, okay, this area, uh, this is optic chiasm, and the, um, this is optic chiasm, and that area, the pituitary is located very close to the optic chiasm. And when it push here, when it push here, uh, what happened to the, this uh, nerve will be Injured, injured. When it is injured, there is no uh, or not function of this vision. So not function of the vision. So patient have limited vision. Limited vision just cannot see at the uh, side, both sides. So we call it by temporal hemianopia. This is a partial blindness, missing the vision at the outer half of the visual field of both sides. All right. Uh, uh, excuse me, doctor. Yes, what's your name? Uh, doctor, I just want, uh, my name is Tabilan here. Okay. Uh, Tabilan. Good afternoon, doctor. Afternoon. Yes, doctor. So, my question is, so, uh, for this bitemporal hemopnipia, mm. is it due to the lesion or the damage occurred due to the compression from the, for example, the tumor that yes. arises from the pituitary? Yes, yeah. 
the most so, common. Uh, uh-huh. the compression leads to this uh, lesion and damage. Um, uh, the compression at the optic chasm here it push, uh, invade or push, causing the damage of these fibers. Yeah, optic chasm. Uh, the fibers, these fibers damage. When these fibers damage, it's not. This fibers not function anymore. All right. Okay, doctor. Thanks a lot, uh, doctor. All right. Okay. Uh, this is the most common. Not uh, yeah, the most common. But I can tell you, the only tumor. When if I want to ask, that's the only tumor that I want to uh, that will ask you for the pituitary. Only pituitary adenoma. Although you have, we have the pituitary carcinoma. We've never asked you because that's very very rare. Uh, it's very crucial in 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 uh, medical. We need to know the the common things, and the rare thing we don't like to ask actually. And because I just received the email from uh, someone, I think third year student from my lecture. It's mentioned the uh, A B C D. The so uh, the question uh, is what is the common cause of this this this. And she very confused because I did mention all of that, and she assumed that all that true. But the question is, what is the common <laughs> cause of the common? Just just the common one. So the word common give a very uh, impactful to in medicine. Yeah, we need to know whether common or not in everything. So pituitary edema is the most common cause of the hepatitisurisa, and then it is a ten percent of the intracranial neoplasia. And the peak incidence in adult, uh, uh, which is 30 to 50, considered as a young age. Lah. Functional or non-functional? Uh, non-functional, sometimes we call it silent. Hmm? Silent. Um, hormone negative or plurihormonal? Okay. Like this. Functional means it has a produced hormone and the produce, uh, that hormone gives effect to the, give a clinical manifestation. Non-functional is no clinical manifestation of hormone excess, but it, that's why we call it silent. But it's maybe it's maybe it can be a positive for the hormone, but maybe at the tissue level. All right, okay. But for hormone negative, hormone negative is a negative for hormone. It's not producing any hormone, and it is hormone negative even at the tissue level. Okay, but for plurihormonal is the uh, when the condition it produces two or more of the hormones. <coughs> we call it plurihormonal uh, adenoma. And this uh, pituitary adenoma contribute three percent associated with the men type one, eh? <coughs> multiple endocrine neoplasia, MEN. Okay, and it is associated with genetic abnormalities. Single somatic cells, G protein mutation, man syndrome, RAS and CMIC. This is all the genes that have been uh, found uh, from the researcher that that associated with the uh, uh, that those who has pterygnoma may uh, possible to have this uh, mutation of the gene gene mutation. Okay. Uh, but when uh, since we are in endocrine organ, endocrine blood, so we need to know uh, about the multiple endocrine neoplasia (MEN) syndrome, and it is actually a group of genetically inherited disease that result in proliferative lesion, as either hyperplasia, adenoma, adenoma, carcinoma of multiple organs. For example, men type one. Patient, we call it men type 1, when when patient have pituitary adenoma, at the same time have parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia, at the same time have a pancreas hyperplasia and also adrenal cortical hyperplasia. This is a men type 1. For the men type 2A and 2B, it's some difference in terms of parathyroid. A uh, involve parathyroid, B not involve parathyroid. Okay, so basically, sometimes they may ask you in the, uh, in the what the NTF. Okay. Um, gross uh, morphology, uh, gross findings of the pituitary adenoma. It is soft, well circumscribed lesion. 
whatever adenoma consider well circumscribed. Nama adenoma which is benign, well circumscribed, okay? And the lesion is confined to the cella tosica. It's not invade to everywhere. It's just confined to that. The larger lesion extend into the supracellar region above to the cella tosica. We call it supracellar region near to the hypothalamus. And it compresses the optic chiasm and adjacent structures such as some cranial nerve okay okay and it's usually non-encapsulated uh infiltrate it can infiltrate uh in case of the invasive adenoma it's still adenoma still benign but in some cases it can infiltrate uh, we call it invasive adenoma and for the adenoma we call it macro adenoma when the size is more than one centimeter uh, but micro when the size is less than one centimeter macro which is the bigger adenoma, usually non-functional. That's why kita tak sedar, because non-functional. It uh, relies with mass produce local, e local mass effect. Only relies when it causes the local mass effect. But for the functional, normally less than one centimeter, but uh, but patients um, uh, already presented to, to us with the clinical manifestation of the pituitary, uh, hyperpituitarism, okay? Okay, look at here. Look at the pituitary adenoma here, actually, that showing the well circumscribed mass lesion within the cell atrocica. This is tumor. Look at here, the pituitary adenoma, and this is the optic chiasm. Okay. Optic chiasm that have been compressed by the tumor. Mm -hmm. This is the massive, very big. Uh, pituitary uh, from the being shape, uh, being size just now become like this. This is a really invasive uh, adenoma, yeah, and it is usually non-functional. Okay, okay. Look at the microscopy, the cells uh, of the pituitary. Whenever we're talking about the endocrine glands, it has a, a more or less a similar morphology, whereby. Uh, it mainly the uh, benign tumor, and of course, when we talk uh, about benign, the cell more or less uniform. Uniform, okay. Just tengok sekali lalu, it is uniform. Jangan terlalu teropong lebih lebih. It is uniform, okay. Abaikan yang beza beza sikit sikit itu, but it is uniform, okay. Lebih kurang sama. And monomorphic, monomorphic means cell tu lebih kurang sama lah. Uh, uniform sama, monomorphic tu, sel dia tu, bentuk dia tu sama. Kalau bulat-bulat belaka, tak ada yang empat segi, tiga segi macam tu, right? Okay, so monomorphic. The cells arrange in sheets. Nampak? In sheeting. Sheets. Sheets. Uh, sometimes can be in court, but mainly in sheet. Okay. Um, but uh, you need to look at under higher power for example here some of the cells for example here the cells the, look at the cytoplasm of the cells some look at the um, some looks acidophilic and some maybe here look basophilic all right um mitosis uh, mitosis is in textbook we call it sparse uh, sparse means scanty Actually, it's very difficult to get mitosis because it's benign. Okay, okay. Whenever you want to describe the cells, make sure you describe the pattern of the cells, whether it is in gland, whether in sheets. Okay, so what shape of the cells? Round, oval. What the content of the nuclei? Whether prominent nuclei or not? No, there's no nuclei or whatever because this is the uh, uh, benign. B9 tumor, yeah. B9 tumor. It's not not. Uh, it just uh uh the most important here. Mono, it uniform cells. Uh, uniform cells. The cell have abundant granular cytoplasm, and some other cytoplasm is acidophilic, and some is the basophilic. All right. And look at here. Okay. Uh, this from uh. In pathology, we should be able, we must be able to give a diagnosis based on the cellular morphology. Based on the uh, morphology that uh, that being sent to us, we need to give the 
uh, uh, diagnosis. So after correlate with the radiological findings, with the clinical history, so when we saw this type of cells, we call it pituitary adenoma. Okay, pituitary adenoma. But not stop to that because we have variety of the what we have type many types of the pituitary adenoma, whether it is somatotroph, whether lactotroph, whether somatotroph, uh, uh, whether what, what memo somatotroph or lactotroph or uh, whatever ACTH is it producing uh, hormone. So how to to give uh, this uh, diagnosis? So we need to stay in the cells with the immunohistochemical stain. For example, here, we need to do the GH or growth hormone stain. Now the stain, if, if the cells is uh, producing the growth hormone, so the GH, uh, we stain the immunohistochemical, we stain with the antibody to the GH, so it will show the brown color. So it means that the cell present a GH uh, antigen. So this is a growth hormone secreting cells. So when we found this is a growth hormone secreting cells, so we give a diagnosis of the somatotroph adenoma. Okay, the same thing here. This is prolet. We know that this is pituitary adenoma based on the features of the cell. The the, the tumor is enlarged tumor that composed of the uh, this type of cell monoclonal cells with uh, with the abundant cytoplasm like this. But what type of the pituitary noma? And then we stay for the few uh, 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 cell, uh, we, we stay with the antibody for the prolactin here and it take out the stain. So this is the lactotroph adenoma. Okay, that is how we give a diagnosis and we report the diagnosis to the clinician. Uh, excuse me, doctor. All right. Uh, again, me, Kabilan. Mm. So, doctor, so using with HNA staining, we can say mm. that the patient is uh, diagnosed with pituitary adenoma, yes, and then adenoma. when we use uh, uh, when mm. we use this immuno uh, immunohistochemical stains, then only we can know the specific type of right. adenoma. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, yes. Uh, for the treatment, also will be different due to the types of the specific adenoma, right, doctor? Um, for pituitary adenoma treatment, uh, it's not actually not much different in terms of the treatment, uh, the type of the based on the type of the hormone, uh, but it gave a different prognosis. It gave the different uh, clinical cause and the the complication to the patient. Uh, so far the study there there's a many undergoing study research on that but but the clinician need to know what that what the uh, the, the cell what type of the pituitary adenoma for certain reason to check for the for the, the other findings and for their prognosis yeah um thanks a lot doctor yeah uh, but that's not your level it just for your information but of course in your exam we will never uh, give you the immunohistochemistry, all right? That's only for your information, for your knowledge, for your understanding, okay? Um, Good doctor, in, thanks a lot. In pathology, we're not only seeing the morphology of the cells, but there are many uh, stains we proceed, some, sometimes it's uh, not only immunostain, we proceed with the molecular uh, pathology just to see the mutation of the gene and whatever gene because that uh, will confirm more about the disease, all right? The disease. And this important in cases, it gives the personalized uh, treatment. It gives the personalized treatment means specific for that type. If we give the treatment targeted therapy for the specific that type, for example, breast cancer or lung cancer, something, but not for the adenoma, all right? All right, because this is a benign lesion, pituitary adenoma. That's why we not target, no targeted therapy given. Doesn't like the not uh like the what we call the uh cancer. This is not considered cancer. This is adenoma benign. So no targeted therapy, even though we know about the different uh hormone involved. Yeah? It mainly uh involve uh give a uh, clinician the prognosis part of the patient and then the, the clinical presentation. Okay. Um and then actually uh we need to differentiate whether the pituitary uh is normal or hyperplastic 
or adenoma. So we have a special stain. We call it reticulin stain. This is one of the methods uh, to differentiate or to distinguish each other, whether it is normal or hyperplasia or adenoma. Because sometimes, you know, just imagine that we never get the whole gland. We just get the biopsy. You know, when we call it biopsy, it is a very tiny tissue for pathologists to examine. So how can we know that this tiny tissue is actually normal or hyperplastic or adenoma? So there is, a, a, of course, there's something that can can um, can uh, can support us to give the diagnosis. We stain the tissue with this stain, reticulin stain. So for the normal, um, you know that reticulin stain meaning that the stain that that uh, the stain that we use to 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 uh, stain the reticular fibers. Eh? It is a type of the fiber, the type three collagen that secreted by the reticular cells that surrounding the cell here. Uh, uh, that that forming a meshwork like a reticulin. So we call it reticulin fibers. Okay. So in normal cells, this reticulin fibers will be picked up, will be stained completely surrounding the cluster of the cells. This is a normal. But in hyperplasia, you can see here, it's expanding. The class is still stain, it's still present of the reticulin, but it's expanding, expanding as like this. Most of the acina become big, big, big. Okay. Um but for the adenoma, there is loss or total breakdown of the reticulin fiber. The cell, this is all the pituitary cells, but not surrounded by the reticulin fibers anymore because there is a neoplasia. The neoplasia, when we call it neoplasia, a tumor or neoplasia, it means that there's a prolif proliferation of the monoclonal cells. The cell keep proliferating. Proliferate. So, whatever fibers or reticulin that surrounding them will be totally break down. I hope everyone understand. Okay? Boleh faham ya? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you for the response. Okay. Uh, now we go to the uh, types of the pituitary adenoma and their prevalence. Okay, I changed in my previous slide. In fact, in your note, I still use the old name, but I have changed it into the current name. Okay, the current name, you know that the Robin now, the 10th edition is <laughs> so fast. The current name, they call it this type of adenoma. For example, uh, no need to, uh, for the full like this, PRL, uh, prolactin secreting letter trough adenoma, no need for that. It, it, actually, letter trough adenoma also uh, dah okay, dah cukup dah. Tapi the complete name dia macam ni lah. Prolactin secreting letter trough adenoma. Okay, mean it, this is the most common, eh? the most common type of adenoma. So mainly, most of the pituitary adenoma secrete the prolactin. Okay, and then the second most common is the GH secreting somatotroph adenoma, 15%. And then the, uh, we have the uh, GH and prolactin, uh, dua dua they produce adenoma. And then we have the uh, uh, SATH producing cotitroph adenoma, FSH producing gonadotroph adenoma. We have non cell adenoma or non functioning adenoma that produce any uh, the hormones. The TSH producing terotroph adenoma and other plurihormonal adenoma yang produce more uh, more than two hormones. All right. So the most uh, the most common parallel second is GH. Okay. Itu yang perlu tahu. Okay. So now we go one by one the prolactin secreting terotroph adenoma. Uh, it is the most common hyperfunctioning adenoma, which is female affected more than male. Usually young age lah, 20 to 40. Uh, clinical features, of course lah, amenorrhea, galacteria, loss of libido, infertility. Hmm? Because like, prolactin will affect the the, the menstrual uh, period, no no uh, no menses cause amenorrhea. Galacteria producing the breast milk, okay. The prolactinoma, the prolactinoma, the the lactotroph adenoma lah, will cause the 
hyper prolactinemia causing the pituitary pituitary adenoma tadi produce a lot of the prolactin masuk dalam blood blood circulation we call it hyper prolactinemia nemia means that things already in the blood vessels eh? blood circulation and this will inhibit the GnRH uh, causing the low LH and FSH bila low LH and FSH patient will cause the infertility hypogonadism and amenorrhea okay so the cells the lactotroph cells uh, lactotroph adenoma you do, the cell will be uniform as to the fili or chromophobic cells they arrange in sheets okay Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, the clinical manifestation of the hypoprolactinemia, you can see here, color women, infertility, ir menstrual irregularity or amenorrhea or galacturia. The same thing in men also, if higher in prolactin, there will be galacturia as well, but, but uh, less percentage. Importance, visual field abnormalities, headache, uh, extraocular muscle weakness and an anterior pituitary hypofunction. So this is the hypogonadism. Lah. Hypogonadism both in women and women. All right. And then how about the growth hormone secreting? Somatotrophic adenoma. This is the second most common function in adenoma. Uh, okay. It causes persistent hyper... When the, there is persistent hypersecretion of the growth hormone, it will stimulate the liver, the hepatic secretion of the IGF-1, the insulin-like growth factor 1. Okay. Atau nama lain dia, somatomedin C. And this can cause the gigantism or acromegaly. Okay. What is gigantism? Dulu saya ingat giant. Senang nak ingat giant, macam giant. Okay, gigantism. It occurs in growth hormone secreting somatotrophy adenoma of children before the closure of the hypophysis. Hmm? Kalau, um, kalau uh, adult lain tak panggil gigantism lah. Ni because it happened in children before the closure of the hypophysis, we call it gigantism. It is due to the elevated uh, level of DH and IGF-1. And that cause the generalized increase in the body size with disproportionately long arms and legs. This is an example of the gigantism. You can see this is a normal. This is not dwarf, but this is a normal person. And this is a gig gigantism person where we can see this disproportionately long arms and legs. Yeah. Okay. And how about the acromegaly? Acro, acro means extremities. Megaly, basal. Great. And if increased level of GH, if this is occur in the adult after the closure of the epiphysis, so there will be the growth most conspicuous in the skin, the soft tissue, the visceral organ like the thyroid, heart, liver or adrenal, uh, bones, face, hands and feet. Uh, so uh, that's why we patient with uh, will come to you with the enlargement of the jaw. We call it prognathism with broadening of the face, chin, uh, everything. So this is acromegaly. Eh? We call it acromegaly. This is an example of the acromegaly. We can see here the broadening, broad the punya jaw eh? with a protrusion of the jaw or pro prognathism we call it, and the mandibular overgrowth. This is very typical for the acromegaly passion okay everything become big nampak hidung-hidung pun semua besar semua okay um you can see uh enlarge the hands enlarge feet is broad sausage like fingers and there is there will be gonadal dysfunction presence of diabetes mellitus generalized muscle weakness hypertension um we need to check for the serum gh and igf1 that produced by the liver tadi uh, because GH, dia punya action to the liver will increase the production of the uh, insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1 dekat liver. So, <clears throat> so there will be increase in this uh, to diagnose the acromegaly or the mm, growth hormone excess pituitary adenoma. Okay. You can hear this is normal hand. This is acromegaly hand become broadening. As compared to the left hand here, the right hand become wider, thickened and stubby. Yeah? 
This is an example of the acromegaly passion. Okay. Now we go to ACTH secreting a corticotrol adenoma. The cells probably can be basophily or chromophobic cells. Um, this it is due to increase in the ACTH by the anterior pituitary. Uh, when there is ACTH, ACTH target organ pada adrenal. So adrenal can produce a lot of the cortisol. Uh, we call it hypercortisolism. And this is a Cushing syndrome or Cushing disease. Whatever condition due to excess ACTH um, by the pituitary, uh, we call it a Cushing syndrome or Cushing disease. So how to diagnose other than clinical features? We need to take for the 24-hour urine free cortisol, whereby there is a loss of the diurnal pattern of the cortisol secretion. So diurnal pattern meaning that the cortisol will be increased in certain peak at a certain hour and will be reduced in the certain uh, day, a uh, certain uh, uh, hour. For example, cortisol increase bila? Anyone knows? Morning. Yeah, Morning. sebab it saja. You bang pagi cortisol will be increased, and then it, on the uh, on the day forward uh, become low and low and low. Sampai lah saat you nak tidur tu dah tak ada dah cortisol. I'm afraid that uh, so before semua orang dah low cortisol, I think I need to go faster. Bila dah low cortisol, semua orang akan fall asleep. Okay, look at the patient with the uh, Cushing syndrome. I, uh, these features you know, you need to know well. You know, you need must be in your fingertips. Hmm? The common features of the cortisol, uh, I know Cushing syndrome. For example, the the buffalo hump, the trunk of obesity, the striae of the skin, and their presentation, what will be the, the, the common presentation of the Cushing syndrome, that one you should know because this is the most common um, uh, scenario being given, whether SBQ or OSCE on your SM, yeah, before it relate with the uh, uh, cortic, uh, I mean, adrenal cortical adenoma, for example, pituitary adenoma that producing the ICTH, but they give you the scenario first. Okay. And for other pituitary adenomas like uh, gonadotroph adenoma uh, that produce in the LH and FSH, tyrotroph adenoma, TSH producing tumor, or non-functioning adenoma uh, uh, or null cell adenoma, this not being not will not uh, discuss specific, but it is less. It's not that common as other type, and then. Pituitary carcinoma. This is a very rare, which is less than 1%. And please add it in your note. I found just now, I found um, it's wrongly written there, non-functional. Okay. I don't know why it's written there, non-functional. Maybe problem in typing or whatever. But pituitary carcinoma, mostly functional. Hmm? Especially... Uh, the most common hormone that been produced by the pituitary carcinoma is the prolactin and ACTH. These two hormones is the most common hormone, not GH. That's uh, quite weird, but for the pituitary adenoma, um, uh, GH are quite common growth hormone, but the pituitary carcinoma, no, it's mainly prolactin and ACTH. But to diagnose a pituitary carcinoma, the diagnosis requires demonstration of the metastasis require the demonstration of the metastasis to lymph nodes, bones, liver, uh, not via histology, okay? Must have the evidence of the metastasis. So the causes of the hypopituitarism include the brain tumor or other mass lesion, adenoma or carcinoma, uh, pituitary surgery, pituitary apoplexy, Sheehan syndrome, which is ischemic necrosis of pituitary, okay? The usually happen in postpartum necrosis or anterior of the anterior pituitary lah. Pituitary apoplexy ni dia sudden hemorrhage into the gland resulting in lap, uh, rapid enlargement of the gland leading to the neurosurgical emergency, which can cause sudden death. Can be sometimes can be due to trauma or other uh, metabolic syndrome. 
And then uh, other causes are hypopituitarism, like the rocky clefsis, the empty cell syndrome, the genetic defects, the other tumors that involve in hypothalamus, like craniopharyngioma or malignant tumor or metastasized tumor. And then inflammatory disorder like TB, sarcoidosis, infection, the stroke, heat injuries. Okay, now we go to the last part, which is posterior pituitary uh, syndrome. Okay, finish about the anterior. Uh, anterior just now, we have uh, the hyperpituitarism. And last one, the hypopituitarism. And now we, we go to the posterior pituitary syndrome. Uh, there's not many, only two, two diseases in posterior pituitary syndrome, which is all, both diseases are related with the ADH. Related with ADH. First is the diabetes insipidus. This is uh, um, causing the uh, low ADH. Okay. You know that ADH, ADH, um, uh, antidiuretic hormone. Yeah, antidiuretic. Yeah, they, they uh, prevent the water loss. ADH uh, is a water conserving. They re re retain the water in the body. In, in diabetes insipidus, you know what happened? Huh? When there is a deficiency of the ADH, huh? deficiency of the ADH, so cannot retain the body water. So patient will come, will cause the, cause the polyuria, polydipsia, and nocturia. Huh? Uh, urinate a lot. Hmm? And the, there is inability of kidneys to reabsorb water properly from the urine. Okay. Chronic excretion of abnormally large volume of the dilute urine. Semua air terkeluar, excrete, can not able to reabsorb the water. The, the causes uh, uh, include the heat trauma, the tumors, the surgery, inflammatory disorders of hypothalamus and pituitary. There is two forms, whether central or nephrogenic. So what we are talking here is about central, which is neurogenic or pituitary origin. Lah. Okay, but because in, diabetes insipidus also can be due to the nephrogeny or renal tubular, uh, renal tubular problem, unresponsive to the ADH. All right. Okay, and then the second scenario, the second scenario is due to the uh, syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. We call it SIADH. Yeah, this is uh causing the high high ADH. This condition of high ADH. It is uh SIADH is defined by the hyponatremia and hypoosmolality. You know high bila high ADH. Just imagine there is a lot of water. Macam banjir lah. Hmm, macam banjir. Banyak sangat sebab ADH ni kan retain water. So dia banyak sangat air dalam badan. So when there is a, a lot of water in our body, of course we cause the hyponatremia. Dilute, dil, dilute lah semua um, uh, apa dia, electrolyte. So, hyponatremia and hypoosmolality resulting from inappropriate continuous secretion or, or action of the ADH despite, uh, despite normal or increased plasma volume which result in impact water secretion. Okay, so this resorption of excessive amount of free water causing the hyponatremia, cerebral edema, neurologic dysfunction. So the causes of SIADH include the brain surgery, the medication, the chronic infection, the atopic ADH secretion by malignant neoplasm, for example, small cell carcinoma. So remember that SIADH, SIADH causing the hyponatremia. Okay, hyponatremia, but the hyponatremia is not due to the... Uh, 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 low, uh, not due to the uh, low volume. It is you volumia. Uh, it's a lot of vol uh, water, but uh, it causes hyponatremia because of the dilutional uh, effect. Okay, hyponatremia result from an excess water rather than deficiency of the sodium. Mm? It's not because of low sodium. Sodium is there, but uh, dilutional. So when there is a hyponatremia, there will be osmotic fluid shift that cause cerebral adenoma, 
So patient pre can present with a high increase or increase or high in intracranial pressure, uh, pressure, like headache, muscle cramp, irritability, coma, everything. But uh, I put this slide because I got many questions asking about the uh, why it is cerebral edema, why not peripheral edema, edema, why high uh, high uh, total body water causing still uh, costes. Uh, I try to help by by giving this information, but I think to to know it better, I think you need to refer to the physiology doctors. Uh, I'm afraid if pathology doctor explain about this, it might cause you more confusion. But you should know that here I put the, the table here, although it is hyponatremia, but it is euvolemia, not hypervolemia. Okay? Because we have two types of the uh, hyponatremia, whether euvolemia or hypervolemia. Okay? That's why uh, uh, you need to read more about this. It's effect on cerebral edema, but not peripheral ed ed uh, edema. Okay? It's because the total body water is high and the blood vessel also normal. So that's why there's no peripheral edema. Uh, it is called, uh, fall under uvelomic hyponatremia. Okay? Why they punya ni menyebabkan costas? Because polydipsia due to normal volume. Polydipsia. Sebab polydipsia is what? Polydipsia ni sekali. Sorry? Excessive test. Excessive test kan? <coughs> ah, yang ni pun uh, saya pun tak tak pasti juga. I I, I want everyone, uh, you need to ask your physiology doctor. Maybe maybe they can can elaborate more to you. Why still can cost us? Padahal kalau ikut set. Tadi banyak air kat dalam badan dia. Kenapa masih lagi dahaga? Okay. But you need to um, understand all that and, uh, and and you need to differentiate the the features uh, between the diabetes insipidus and, and the SIADH. Uh. Just remember that diabetes insipidus, what happened? There's a loss of the water. Loss of the water. So, banyak air yang keluar, low level ADH, hypernatremia, dehydrated. Patient lost too much fluid. What? And then the, for the SIADH, low urinary output, high level ADH, a, a lot of retain too much fluid in the, in the body, overhydrated, hyponatremia. But both will present with excessive tests. All right? Okay. And then lastly, I think, uh, oh, um, okay, hypothalamic, uh, other tumor, okay, other tumor uh, that uh, can uh, just present, their presentation just like a pituitary uh, tumor because it, it location um, near to the cellular region or supracellular tumor. So that tumor include the glioma or craniopharyngioma. Now, these two tumor also uh, their presentation similar to pituitary adenoma because uh, they have punya area just uh, near to the pituitary adenoma, supracellular tumor. Okay. Uh, okay. I think that's all. Now let's just assess uh, whether you understand or not. Okay. So for the first um, MCQ regarding syndrome of in appropriate ADH, SIADH, it is a deficiency of ADH. False. False. So it increased ADH, right? False. The small cell carcinoma of the lung is a cause. Oh. True. 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 When there is this increase in the ADH. ADH by the tumor. Okay. It presents with hyponatremia. True. Ah, uh, true. Okay. Dilutional hyponatremia. It is associated with peripheral edema. False. 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 It causes the central edema. The edema. 
Cerebral. Cerebral edema. Okay. Uh, polyuria is a clinical feature? False. False. Yeah. False. Less water out, output. Okay. False. Okay. Causes of hypopituitarism. Hypopituitarism include pituitary adenoma. Jawab seorang. Causes hypo hypoterrorism include Siti Khadija. Uh, false. False. Kenapa false? Pituitarism bukan hypoterrorism ke? Tak ambil. Uh, ni, uh, uh, ni dah baca ni uh, tapi tak baca tak really. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Pituitary adenoma Boleh menyebabkan The most common cause of the Hyperpituitarism Pituitary adenoma juga Boleh menyebabkan hypopituitarism But depends lah uh, <coughs> Tapi tak common lah Tapi can Okay, okay, okay. Uh, For example kalau null cell adenoma Ke apa ke yang tak menghasilkan uh, Hormon Dia menyebabkan hypopituitarism Okay. And then tuberculous meningitis. True. True. Okay. Diabetes insipidus. False. 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 Tak ada kaitan pun kan. Rachiclapsis. True. 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 Just apa je apa yang benda tadi anda hypothyroidism. Sheehan syndrome. True. Betul. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all from me. Any other questions?